my objective has been to help you become more intentional with your inputs. The things you allow into your heart. I want to share five simple principles that you might want to remember as the laws of input. One, environment. You are heavily influenced by your physical surroundings, especially the things you read, watch, and listen to, as well as the words and images that consistently capture your attention. Where you are reinforces who you are. Two, association. You will gradually take on the habits, attitudes, convictions, world view, and sometimes even the body language and mannerism of the people you habitually spend time with. Three, excluded alternative. When you say yes to the wrong inputs, you are by default saying no to the right inputs. When you invest time with the right people, you are protected from spending time with the wrong people. Four, non-neutrality. All inputs contribute to who you become as a person. Nothing is neutral. Every exposure, either overtly or discreetly, influences your personality, your character, and the choices you make during the day even though you are consciously unaware of most of them. Five, attraction. Over time, you will draw into your life the conditions, events, people, and possibilities that correspond with your thinking. Your visible life on the outside is a mirror, image, reflection of your invisible thought life, most of which has been shaped by your consistent inputs. With these principles in mind, I want you to establish five ground rules for what you will allow into your heart. The rules you develop are up to you. My sole interest is in helping you to become intentional in this vital area. In other words, I don't want you to wing it. Here are a few sample ground rules borrowed from my clients in the 1% club. I invest most of my discretionary time with people of equal or greater character, and I reevaluate my progress in this area every 90 days. I listen to inspirational and educational audio programs in the car whenever I travel alone. I watch only television programs that are appropriate to watch with my kids. I plan my positive mental nutrition one week in advance. I read something wholesome and positive before going to bed and immediately upon awakening in the morning. In addition to the examples above, use the following questions to guide your first draft. Who do I want to become as a person and what are my most important lifetime goals? Do I or will I desire my current exposures for my children? If not, what should I change? Which people in my life challenge me to high standards? Which people enable me to ease up on my priorities? How much positive mental nutrition do I want to consume each day or week? What do I listen to in the car most of the time? How much TV is the right amount for me, given my other goals? What kinds of programs should I increase limit or eliminate? How would I like to change because of what I read? If I don't make any changes in what I allow into my heart and mind, what kind of person will I be in 10 years? The point 
of putting together your ground rules is to help you decide in advance what you are going to fill your mind with on an ongoing basis. If you don't make that decision ahead of time, it is easy to be swept along by culture of mores and conformed to what is current, trendy, and convenient rather than being transformed by the renewing of your mind.